Well, today we're going to continue in our Ephesians series, and uh, uh, we're finally going to get out of chapters 1 and 2. So, uh, actually out of 3, too. Um, yeah, last week, y'all got uh, the Ephesians chapter 3 prayer, second service didn't, so consider yourselves lucky and blessed, right? And so they don't get to hear about Ephesians chapter 3, unless they go watch online, so <laughs> uh, anyway. So we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5 today. And uh, as we look over the book of Ephesians, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. And uh, this is one of the churches that he, he planted, the one of the, that he started. And he's writing uh, from prison uh, to the people and encouraging them in their faith. And this is one of my favorite books of the Bible. If I don't know what I want to read that day, I go to Ephesians because there's so much good stuff in it. And, um, and so kind of the breakdown is the first three chapters, uh, he encourages them and reminds them of who they are in Christ. And that's what we've been talking about for the last three weeks is who we are in Christ. And uh, we're going to move into chapters four and five today to where it talks about how to live the Christian life. And, and he encourages them in certain ways. Uh, we're going to talk about that today. And uh, the last chapter, it talks about how to stand firm in your faith. And so and I believe Terry may be talking about that next week. No pressure, Ryan. I mean, that, I think that's what you told me you were going to talk about next week. I don't remember. But anyway, so we're going to be in chapters four and five today. And we're not going to cover everything. Uh, this is not a verse by verse. This is kind of hitting the main points and the main ideas in this. So if you've got your Bibles, you can go to Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, that's where we're going to start today. And I've got 28 minutes to get it done. Two chapters. You think I can do it? Uh, Y'all got more faith in me than I do then. Okay, so uh, let's start in uh, verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle and be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the, through the bond of peace. All right, and so here he starts off that he's in, encouraging them. We can see a transition here. And, and he says, I encourage you, I urge you to live a life worthy uh, of the calling that you received. Now that seems like a big order to fill, doesn't it? Live a life worthy of what Jesus gave us? <laughs> like, whew, you're not asking much, are you, Paul? Uh, but here's the thing. This is what I want to get across to you today, that, that you can live a life worthy of the calling that you've received from God. Okay? When you walk away today, I hope you... Feel like you can do it because a lot of times we will read the Bible and we think of all this stuff. Just this one, he said, be completely humble, gentle, patient, and bearing with one another in love. I mean, like, come on, that's like the hardest ones to do, right? <clears throat> you know, be humble, gentle, love everybody. I mean, what? And so he's encouraging us in this. And, and, and uh, as we read through the next two chapters, uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are said. And we're going to look at them and be like, wow. Can I actually do this? And I'm here to encourage you, yes, you can. You can do it, okay? And so um, that's where we're going to jump off today is, is right there, is live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. It says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. All right, and, and so the next little section, he's encouraging unity in the church. We're not going to talk about that uh, today. Uh, it's very important, uh, but we've talked about that in the past, and, but it's not something I want to cover today. And so let's jump down to verse 15 and pick up there. It said, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become, in every respect, a mature body of him who is the head. Of, uh, that's not where I wanted to start. Verse 17, T. <laughs> so I'll tell you this. And insist on it in the Lord that you no longer live as Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking, because they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is due to their hardening of their hearts. And so here we see uh, Paul kind of making a comparison here. He, he talks about us, you know, living a life worthy of what God's called us to do. And, and down here, he's going to compare this uh, to the life that the Gentiles leave. All right, and so for you people who are not familiar with what Gentile means, uh, back in the Old Testament, uh, Israel was God's chosen people. And so that's the one that God concentrated on. And everybody else was considered a Gentile or someone who is not of the Jewish faith or, or the Jewish 
uh, belief. And so they were considered Gentiles. And, and there was a separation between them because the Jews wouldn't have anything to do with the Gentiles because they were not God's chosen people. All right. And so as we move forward, we know that Christ changed that. And now there's no difference between the Jews and the Greeks or the Gentiles. We're all the same under God now. And so what he's talking about here is basically the Gentiles now would be people who are not of the faith. These are people who live in the world. And so Today I want to uh, I want to break out my whiteboards again. Does anybody know Bob Ross? I'm just kidding. I'm not drawing today. I'm going to spare you that one. All right. But I have two whiteboards today, and I feel like, and I feel like they're both falling apart. <laughs> I think I need to buy some new whiteboards. Stay. You're good. Okay, we're good. There we go. All right. And so today I want to kind of compare, uh, as we read through the Scripture, just write down the words that he's talking about here. And uh, let us look at these. All right. I'll get my life in order here. We'll, we'll get going. All right. We might be here a while then, right? Are y'all out there today? <laughs> just wondering here. All right, so, verse 17. So I tell you this, and insist on in the Lord, that we no longer live as the Gentiles do. This will be our Gentile list up here. I know y'all can read that from the back, right? Perfect, great. All right, and so, in the, um, no, 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 no longer lives as the, as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They were darkened in their understanding. We'll just write darkened. All right. So in their understanding and separated from the life of God because, I'm just going to read it off the screen here since I've got my back to you. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Because of their ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their heart. So separated from God and hard hearts. Okay. Okay. Having lost all sensitivity, that they, they have given themselves over to sensuality so that they indulge every kind of impurity and they're full of greed. So sensuality. Hopefully y'all can't read this because I'm probably going to misspell some stuff here real quick. If that's all right with y'all. So sensuality, indulge, and then greed. Some fun words, right? That, however, is not the way that you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught according to him in the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught that with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, which is corrupted by the deceitful desires, to be made new in, an, to be made new in your attitudes of your mind. It's going to be our Christian list up here. All right, so... New attitude of mind. All right. I should have had one of y'all write this while I read, huh? That might have been a little bit easier. Okay, where was I now? Verse 23, there we go. To be made new in the attitude of the minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So we're going to write righteous and holy. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. All right, so we're going to speak truth. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not be, be deceived by the devil. Do not let, give the devil a foothold in your life. All right. So let's jump back to this one. We're just going to say angry acts. All right. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but work and do something useful with their hands that they may have something to share with those in need. So we're going to write stealing on this one and work down here. All right. 
Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up of others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So unwholesome talk. Encouraging words. I'm going to get my exercise in today. Do some squats. There we go. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with any other form of malice. There's you a lot right there. So bitterness... Rage, anger, brawling, slander, and malice. All right, it says, uh -oh. it says, be kind and compassionate towards one another. Forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. I can't get down that low anymore. Okay. Forgiving. All right. We're almost done. Chapter 5. Following God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up, for a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Among you there must not even be any hint of sexual immorality. Let's get up here. Sexual. I'm just going to write sexual immoral. Or any kind of impurity or greed because those are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be any... In any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. All right, so obscene or foolish talk. Coarse joking. Well, I got you here, thanksgiving. All right. For this you can be sure of. No immoral, impure, greedy person, such person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not partner with them. Sorry T, I stopped it too early for you. Okay, so here we go. Look at these two lists right here. I know y'all can all read those and it's beautiful and y'all can tell everything that it says. But he's comparing and contrasting uh, the Gentiles or people who are of the world and the way Christians should live. Okay, and so here the Gentiles are darkened, they're separated from God, they're hard-hearted, uh, they indulge in sensuality, greedy, angry acts, stealing, unwholesome talk, bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, malice, sexual immorality, obscene and foolish talk, Coarse joking and empty words, all right? Christians, it says, new attitudes of mind, righteous, holy, speak truth, work hard, encouraging words, kind, compassionate, forgiving, and thanksgiving. Now, as we look at these two lists, which one do you think that you want to be doing? I mean, that's a pretty easy question, isn't it? We all want to live like this, right? This is what we want to live at. But as we look at this list, where do you see yourself at? That's the not fun question, right? Because as I look at this list, I see myself on both of them. Okay, that's where most of us are. I mean, we, we see a little bit of both. And, and so, but what Paul is doing here is he is not trying to give us a list of things to do. All right? That is what the Pharisees did. That's what religion does. It says you need to do this, 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 and this. If not, you're going to hell. All right. That's what religion tells us. And so I don't believe that's what Paul is trying to do with these lists that he just gave us. Is like, you know, don't do any of this stuff, but do this stuff. Okay? Christianity is not a to-do list. Okay? 
Christianity is not a to-do list. And so what we're looking at here is this is the fruit of being connected with Christ. Okay? God never expected us to live perfectly like this in our own power. Okay? See, when we got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of us. All right? And as we connect with God, as we do the things that we're supposed to do. Now, I'm not just saying God's just going to automatically do this for us. I wish he did. Wouldn't that be awesome? When you got saved, you just automatically started acting like that. That would be so awesome. Just imagine how many people would become Christians if all Christians acted like this. And it just happened automatically. That would be awesome. But here's the deal. Is that... We don't do this stuff in our own power. We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. But there's still work that we have to do. All right. I never want to make you think that, hey, I get saved and that all of a sudden things are just going to start changing for me. There are some things that will change in your heart. But your actions don't change until you submit yourself to God, till you submit yourself to his word and to his conviction in our life. As we begin to put in the work of connecting with God, getting into his word, reading, meditating, praying, getting to know God. As we do those kind of things, the Holy Spirit begins to work on the inside of us, convicting us and correcting us in some things. And we have to do the, the, the hard thing of submitting to that. It's like, okay, God, I, I know that I need to quit doing this. And so, so God, I, I give this to you. God, help me to overcome this thing in my life. And then he's going to give you certain things that you need to do to make that happen. All right. And, and so I'm not saying that we have to do this ourselves. We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. But we're a part of the process. OK. And, and that's where a lot of people fall short is like, man, I don't want to put in the work. I don't feel like reading my Bible today. I don't feel like going through the process of changing my friends or go through the process of changing the places that I do. I enjoy watching those movies. I enjoy listening to that. Well, is, is God convicting you about those things? Then he's trying to change you. He, he's trying to do something in your life. He's trying to get you here so you'll get out of this bitterness and rage that you've been dealing with. If you never submit this bitterness and rage to him, then it's never going to change. All right. And, and so we have work to do in this, but but it, it's the power of God that does it. This is the fruit of being connected to God. Think about it like this. An apple tree does not have to try to produce apples. It just automatically does it, doesn't it? Why? Because that's what apple trees do. They produce apples. As long as it's healthy, as long as it has good environment and, and, and it's in the right place, it's going to produce apples. It's the same thing in our Christian life. If we put ourselves in a healthy place and doing the right things, then we are going to start producing this in our life. Okay? It's not one of those things like, okay, I need to work on my new attitude of the mind today. I need to begin to change. As we submit to God and his word, he begins to do that in our lives. He begins to change those thoughts. Now, you're part of the process again, let me tell you. It's not just automatic. You got to learn to believe God's word over what you think. Sometimes God's word doesn't make sense to our carnal minds. And we think, God, that doesn't make sense. But we got to say, I got to believe it anyway. I got to believe your wisdom over my wisdom. Did you know God's smarter than you? He created wisdom. He knows everything. He knows how everything works together. So we need to do it his way. Right? But that doesn't make sense. I don't care. Do it his way anyway. Because that's what he said. And he knows. And, and, and so we've got to submit to him. And he goes on and, and let me jump down to verse, I got too many pieces of paper up here. Verse 15. He says this, he says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So we're about to, he's about to tell us something here that's really it says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not be drunk on wine, 
which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, songs of the Spirit. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So be very careful how you live. Don't, don't just go out there and live like everybody else. Don't just live like the world. Be wise in what you're doing, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. See, if we truly understand what the will of the Lord is for our lives, it's the same as Jesus, to seek and to save that which is lost. We need to make, take advantage of every opportunity. Think about this. These days are evil that we're living in. There's bad stuff going on all around us. There's people that need to know Jesus. We need to take advantage of the opportunity when it arises because their day might be over. This might be the day that they find Jesus if we take advantage of that opportunity. You hear what I'm saying? See, we don't live this life so that we can say, look how spiritual I am. Look how good I am. We live this life because people need us to. We live this kind of life because people need Jesus. And this is how we show people Jesus. All right. But if the church looks like this up here, ain't nobody coming. Ain't nobody. Want, they've already got that. They don't need any more of this. They need this. And the church is where they should be finding this. All right. And so. Here's the thing. In verse uh, 18, it says, Do not be drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Now, this isn't so much a discourse on drinking right here as it is as, as a frame of mind. See, the world offers counterfeits to everything that God offers us. Okay? It offers cheap, easy, a knockoff. It offers shortcuts and temporary pleasures. And all of those are counterfeits of something that God has already given us. He said, you need to be filled with the Spirit. Why do a lot of people drink wine? Number one, they want an escape. It's a way to relax. It's something that makes them feel good. You know, there's lots of reasons why people would do that. What does the Spirit of God do for us? When we're filled with the Spirit, He brings peace to us. He brings us rest. He brings purpose in our life. See, getting drunk on wine is a counterfeit of being filled with the Holy Spirit because God's already offering this stuff and it's so much better what God offers us, but it's easier to get drunk, right? And so it's this whole battle that we have going on in the inside of us. Do we want to satisfy our flesh or do we want to please God in our life? And, and, and this is what it comes down to. Do we want to gratify the, the desires of the flesh? That's the easy way. That's the shortcut. That's the, the cheap knockoff. Or do we want to spend time with God and allow him to come and change our lives and, and give us the life that, that we've always dreamed of having, right? Not having to struggle with our addictions, not having to face the bitterness and the rage and the unwholesome talk and the greed and the, all of this stuff that we want to get rid of. See, if we keep watching those movies that cause us to lust, what do you think we're going to get from it? How do we do this? John 15, verse 1, it says, Jesus said, I am the vine, my father is the gardener. Verse 4, remain in me also, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. There's too many Christians trying to bear fruit without being connected to God. See, if you're trying to do the Christian life on your own, you're trying to bear fruit without God, and it's not going to work. It says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. 
He's made it pretty simple. Stay connected with me or do it your own way. Stay connected with me. Read your Bible. Pray. Respond. Submit. Or you can do it your own way and live like this. See, none of us want to live like this. This is a miserable life. We've all experienced it. It's horrible. It's miserable. It's full of shame and regret. He's not saying you have to do this on your own. He said, just stay connected with me. Build your relationship with me. And I'll begin to produce this in your life. If we go into Galatians chapter 5, and this is my last scripture today. If we go into Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, So I say this, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't, let him guide your lives so that you won't do what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us the desire that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so that you're not free to carry out your own good intentions. Verse 22, I love this. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. This is the New Living Translation right here. I love how it says it. He says, the fruit, or, or the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Notice he didn't say that you produce this kind of fruit in your lives. The Holy Spirit does this for us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, self-control, against such there is no law. Or as it says, there is no law against such these. For those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and have crucified them there. Oh, that's so good. So like I said from the beginning, be humble, gentle, patient, love, that's the way we want to live life, but it's tall order to fill. But all we have to do is be connected with God. All we have to do is put in the work with God and, and build our relationship with Him. And the Holy Spirit will produce that in your life. See, I'm afraid too many Christians are trying to do it on their own. I know I've, I've been there many times. Like, I'm tired of doing this, and so I'm going to just will myself to quit. I'm going to will myself to love that person. You can't do that. It's God that has to love them through you. My love is very conditional. The love that I can only produce within myself. As long as you're nice to me, I love you, right? But see, that's not the way we're supposed to live. We're supposed to love, love our enemies, pray for those who use us and, and bless them. That comes from being connected with God. And so through these two chapters, Paul is encouraging the church at Ephesus. Hey, stay, get connected with God. Get in there and, and build that relationship with Him and He'll begin to give you a new attitude of your mind. He's already given us righteousness and holiness. We'll begin to speak the truth and we'll work instead of steal. We'll be encouraging with our words and instead of having this unwholesome talk. How many times you go to work and there's just unwholesome talk all around, just coarse joking and just like, like ugh. Bring some encouraging words in there. Being kind, compassionate, forgiving, and giving thanks. You can do this as you're willing to submit to God. If you're not willing to submit to God, this is where you're going to be. That makes it sound simple, doesn't it? But it's an everyday decision. When you wake up in the morning... Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve your flesh that day? Or are you going to submit to God? Are you going to choose to love people when you go to work? No matter how they act towards you? Or are you going to let this bitterness and rage and anger come back out? As we submit to God, God will produce the things that we need in our lives. And that we can fulfill the calling that's on our lives because of him, not because of us. Father, we love you. We thank you today. God, that you've given us everything that we need to live the godly life. God, I pray that you just help us to just submit to you. 
submit to your word, submit to your Holy Spirit. God, because we know that you have the best for us, that you want to pr produce good things in our life. God, forgive us of our selfishness, of thinking that we know the best way, that our way is the best. God, help us to humble our hearts before you. Come and do a work in our lives. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we stand and worship today? Prayer team, come forward. If you need to make Jesus your Lord today, if you're tired of your life looking like this and you want this in your life, it starts with the first step of giving your life to Jesus. Say, God, I've messed up. God, I know I can't do it and I need intervention in my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and I submit to you. If you do that, you, you can be saved today. You can begin this life today. These people up here to pray for you. If you need prayer for any other reason, come forward. But let's worship today.